Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Barbino's World. And today, you may have noticed that we're not starting off in uh, the actual Barbino's World. We're in a creative world. And that's because today we're not going to be working on the castle. We're not going to be exploring the nether. We're, we're going to be building another farm, or maybe multiple farms. So the first farm I want to build is a hoglin farm. They're these pigs that um, spawn naturally in the crimson forest biome of the nether. That's a baby one, and this is an adult one. Normally when I build farms in my survival world, I uh, use designs that I find on the internet, or um, sometimes I adapt them a little bit, but normally I don't design farms uh, completely from scratch. But this time, I'm going to give it a try in designing this new hoglin farm. So, um, I know that hoglins, uh, if they are killed using fire, they drop uh, cooked pork chops rather than raw pork chops. In order to um, collect cooked pork chops, I've developed this um, collection system that has hoppers at the bottom like this, and it can be as big as I want to make it and it has soul sand on top of it. Now, there's this new thing in 1.16 that makes soul sand burn blue. And the blue fire does double the amount of damage that normal red fire does. So, that's one mechanic we're going to be making use of. And the other mechanic is that hoppers can actually pull items directly through soul sand because it's slightly smaller than one block. It means that if I drop a hoglin onto this soul fire um, through this glass tube which I've contained it in, the hoglin will um, burn in the soul fire and die dropping cooked pork chops. When it dies, its drops are collected by the hoppers, as we will see down here. So that hoglin dropped two bits of cooked pork chop, and one bit of leather. For the spawning platforms, we're going to use jack-o'-lanterns. And this is because uh, hoglins aren't affected by light level when they spawn. So um, if we use jack-o'-lanterns, only hoglins will spawn in this farm and not all the other mobs that are affected by light level. I also know that warped funguses scare away the hoglins, so if I place a warped fungus on top of a dirt block at, on each side of the spawning, spawning platform, then they should be scared and run into the pit of fire. We can also encase these spawning platforms in fences so that the hoglins don't go anywhere we don't want them to. We also need to put trap doors on these pumpkins here. These trap doors make it so that the hoglins think that they can run across when really they can't and they'll fall down. Let's test it out by spawning one over here. He should be afraid of it and fall in. Now we can go up about 128 blocks above the middle of this farm and uh, then the hoglins should start spawning naturally and we can see how it works. I was starting to get freaked out about uh, the fact that it wasn't working, but it turns out I just built it in the wrong biome, so I copied it over to the Crimson Forest biome over here. As you can see, this entire area is in the Crimson Forest biome, so let's try testing it again. With the player all the way up here, we can check how the farm's doing. So I tested this for just a few minutes, uh, about two minutes, and we didn't get too many hoglins, but I think it was enough. We got ten cooked pork chops and two pieces of leather in only two minutes. So um, I think I'm going to go over to survival and build up this sort of design, but much bigger. So I've just logged into my world to realize that a bunch of my villagers are actually missing. Um, I lost several villagers from my iron farm. Uh, I'm missing three villagers from this pod and two villagers from here. And I'm also missing the farmer villager from the villager breeder. 
and I just have to grab some more villagers because luckily the ones in the villager breeder haven't despawned. So let's go put the rest of the villagers in place. When I send them off, they should drop this rail system and end up right near where I want them in the iron farm. Perfect. Now I open the trapdoor below them and they fall down into the farm. Okay, all of the villagers are back in the iron farm, and it's time to turn it on now by removing the blocks uh, around the zombie. And this next uh, final villager is going to be going into the villager breeder farm area. Now that I've collected all of the resources we need to build the farm, which are in this shulker box, I think we're ready to start building it. Okay, I've finished the farm, and it's already looking really good. Um, it's really not very big um, compared to a lot of other farms that I've built, and it produces a ton of cooked pork chops. When I was just up there building the AFK spot, I got over a stack of pork chops in this chest, and in this chest I got more pork chops. Now that we're at the top of the farm, you can see really small down there, there's a bunch of hoglins that are already dying, which is really good. Okay, it's been almost an hour, and let's check how much loot we've gotten from this farm. So yeah, we have about half a chest filled with pork chops over there and a bit less on this side. Okay everyone, um, now that we're done building that first farm, uh, I'm back in creative and I've already designed yet another farm. And this farm is um, a piglin bartering farm. Piglin bartering is a new mechanic that was introduced in the 1.16 update, and basically what it is, is you give the piglins gold, and they'll drop some random nether-based items on the floor. And this um, system takes advantage of that, and it automatically drops them a ton of gold, and collects the loot that they drop. So basically, you put your gold in here, and you turn it on with this switch, it drops all of the gold right beside them, and this hopper clock is timed perfectly so that um, they receive the exact right amount of gold that they need so that they're constantly bartering. And as soon as one finishes bartering, they get another um, item. This farm is so fast that it actually runs at like three times the speed of a normal hopper, so I couldn't just collect the items with a normal hopper. I need to use this hopper minecart to split all of the items into four different hoppers, which are then channeled into these two droppers, 
uh, and I've designed this auto dropper system that makes the droppers automatically dump out all of their items into here. Right now they're just going into lava, but in my survival world when I build this up, I'm going to put it through a nether portal, and then in the overworld I will make a auto sorting storage system for all the different items. I'm pretty sure you can get 14 different stackable items from this. And here I am at the location where I'm going to build the piglin bartering farm. And the reason I'm going to build it here is because it's near the border between a crimson forest biome and a nether waste biome. As you can see on the left there, it says we're in the crimson forest now, and as we walk this way, it becomes the nether wastes. So the reason we want to build it here is because uh, the piglin farm works a lot better if we pair it with a gold farm. So what I'm going to do is build a big gold farm. Uh, right beside the piglin farm and the gold farm needs to be in a nether wastes biome and uh, The piglin farm doesn't need to be in a crimson forest biome But it's easiest to catch piglins there So the first part I'm gonna build is the part that shoots the items into the nether portal once uh, They've been collected So I'm putting two droppers down like this and those droppers are gonna shoot them into the nether portal these droppers are fed by two hoppers each, which allows the farm to run at four times hopper speed. Now I need to align a hopper minecart in the middle of these four hoppers. I can do that by placing two walls here, putting down a hopper minecart, breaking the rail below it, and then pushing it into the corner of these two walls. It will spread all of the items from uh, this one block into these four hoppers. Now we need to set up the holding chamber for the piglins. Uh, the floor is going to be a piece of soul sand. We're using soul sand again because as we saw in the hogland farm, hoppers can suck through uh, soul sand. And we're also going to encase them in glass. Now we're going to put a dropper right here that will give the piglins gold. Here I've built a hopper clock that automatically powers the dropper on a timer. Okay, so I've um, decorated this area a little bit and I also added an input for the gold bars and a switch to turn on and off the system. I've also built this redstone circuit at the back that is a double auto dropper circuit. So whenever any drops from the farm go into here, into these droppers, they automatically get shot out into this nether portal, which is not lit yet. All that's left to do before this farm is completely finished is to catch five piglins. And what I'm going to do to catch them is build a big spawning platform back here out of stone, and hopefully we'll get some to spawn on it. Once we catch them, we'll name them Bart for bartering, and uh, we'll lure them down into here. So what I need to do is fly up really high so that um, some piglins spawn and then lure them down here with some golden carrots. And then we'll fly down and see how many have spawned. Looks like we got one. Name him Bart. And we'll start luring him with golden carrots. The little babies do get annoying though. So we need to make sure they don't get in the way. So he's gone in. Now we need to open the trap door. And he's down. We have two piglins in now. Okay, I thought that was going to be a lot harder than it actually was, but um, yeah, I was able to get five piglins in there. I really hope there's five and not more than that. But um, yeah, let's give it a test. So I'll just put 32 of my ingots uh, that I got from just like mining and such and when I turn the um, system on the gold should filter through and be dispensed perfectly at the right time so that they're constantly bartering so it should be filling in to the droppers and yeah they're bartering really good um, yeah, we can already see them chucking stuff. Let's move away so that we don't pick any up. Okay, so from about half a stack of gold ingots, we were able to get um, 
this much stuff. That's um, pretty good. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And that's it for this episode in which we built this um, piglin bartering system as well as a very big hoglin farm. Um, in the next episode, uh, I'm going to be working on the gold farm, which I mentioned earlier, and that's going to be extremely productive, and it's going to mean that we can get basically um, infinite nether-based items from our piglin bartering farm. And, yeah, I really want to build up the gold farm quick, because as soon as we can get the system up and running, then we can start getting those, um, uh new piglin bartering goods in because I'm pretty sure they're going to nerf piglin bartering very soon.